Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm doing awesome. Yeah, well, I know you and Coach Malzahn go a lo- go back a long ways. I know you got your start coaching in Memphis in the high schools. I know Coach Malzahn was in Springdale at the time. I know you guys worked together at Arkansas State, but was there a connection between you and Gus prior to that, or did you just kind of get to know him through those Arkansas State ties when you get, went to go work with him? I just got to know him through the Arkansas State ties. Uh, you know, I was, you know, like everyone else at that time, I was very aware of who he was. Now, he had no clue who I was, but uh, uh, just uh, just by God's divine intervention, I just what happened was working the bowl game at Arkansas State uh, when he got hired. And um, and he decided to hire me on to his uh, initial staff at Arkansas State. And so uh, I've been fortunate to have that opportunity to be with him uh, that leads to this point today. Welcome in, Coach. Uh, this is Colin Nash with the three-point conversion. Um, I, you know, the fans here at UCF um, aren't necessarily used to seeing the defensive line being coached um, uh, through specialized means between you and Coach Martin with the interior and the exterior. Kind of walk through what kind of advantage it offers you and the players to have a specialized coaching plan like that. Well, in, anytime that you have two coaches, uh, it allows more attention to detail for each individual player. It's just like being in a school, in a classroom. Uh, the more students per teacher, you know, the less uh, isolated uh, one-on-one time do you have. But when you have uh, two coaches that bring down uh, the defensive line, you are, it allows to be able to have more isolated, more specialized one-on-one uh, interaction and coaching for them. So it, it, it's, a, it's an advantage for the student athlete. Coach, welcome. Trey Strolko, Sons of UCF. During your time working with Coach Malzahn, what would you say you learned from him? Well, I, I tell you this here. What I've learned and, and most admired as well, uh, Coach Malzahn is probably one of the most laser-focused person I've ever met. Uh, one of the most laser-focused people I have ever met. Uh, you know, I, I really admire how he dreams big and he really believes what he is saying. And he lives his life, uh, everything he does, it, it's centered around that dream he has. And he, he gives he gives 100%. Matter of fact, he gives 110% of all his energy, all his effort and his time uh, to accomplish those things that he sets out to accomplish. So I've admired that in, in, you know, in the experience that I've had to uh, get to know him, uh, to, uh, to be, you know, he's been my boss and he, and he's my boss now, but, you know, to know him as a person that, that has been beneficial for me. Coach Matt Rochelle from Orlando Sentinel. Um, I, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about specialized having a coach for the tackles and coach for the ends. What specifically do you see the difference between the tackle and the end position? And what do you guys hope to maybe focus on in each of those individual spots? Well, you know, it, you know, I know a lot of people see the defensive line. You, you tend to think that okay, it's the same thing, but it is some things that are different, especially in the interior guys. Uh, uh, they, you know, they see a lot more double teams than than the end does. Uh, they see, a, and it's a lot, you know, it's a lot more of a physical strain on the defensive tackles from the inside. Uh, then also, they see different things in the uh, in pass protection uh, like an inside guy he, he's going to get a different pass set from an offensive lineman than than an end uh, end who's working on the edge and you get a tackle who who sits vertical who sits off the line of scrimmage more than he would from an inside guy when you have a defensive tackle uh, the inside interior offensive line they're not getting off the line uh, because the, the quarterback is right behind them and so they, they don't want to give that so you see things differently uh, from the inside and the outside. So that's why, you know, it's beneficial uh, to have, you know, two, di- two specialized coaches coaching uh, in the inside and the outside. Kenny, you also spent some time at Cincinnati in 2015 and 2016. You faced UCF during those seasons. What do you remember about the program back then? How much has changed since then? And, and maybe did that make your decision any easier to come to UCF now? And it is not only at Cincinnati. I was at University of Memphis from 2006 to 2009. So I, I'm, I'm quite familiar with UCF. Uh, 
you know, one of the things that, um, you know, one of the things that has always stuck out to me, you know, whenever you're playing uh, UCF, when I was at Memphis and at Cincinnati, you know, I always, you know, always wondered and dreamed what it would be like to coach here. You know, you step on the field, never were you stepping on the field with better athletes than, you know, were here. And then uh, just when I first, the first opportunity I had to come here and coach here uh, at UCF and uh, the bounce house, I was like, man, that aluminum stadium makes a lot of noise, man. I'm like, wow. I'm like, hey, man, in, 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 in this conference, that was something special. You know, that was something special. And to see the atmosphere that the fans had, you know, I, you know, I was at other places and, you know, and I was, a, I was a bit envious to be honest with you. I'm like, man, hey, you know, they got something special there. They got a special atmosphere uh, that, you know, you got a place that, man, you know, kids desire to be at. So, you know, I've always wondered and I've always, you know, dreamed and, and pictured and had a perception of what it looks like or what it would be like to coach here. So, and I'm, I'm extremely grateful and blessed to be here. Oh, hey, hey coach, Andrew Glukov, uh, black and gold banneret. Did your time at Arkansas State while uh, Terry Mahajer was athletic director play a role in your decision to come to Orlando? And, and what can you tell the fans about being part of a program under Mahajer's directory? Okay, I, I, you know, this, this is going to be a little bit different and because uh, I, I don't know if <laughs> y'all know this, uh, but not only did I uh, work at Arkansas State and he was the athletic director, I, I actually played with him. Him and I played college football together. We both played at Arkansas State. So I've been knowing him for quite some time. And, and here's the thing about it. Uh, it, it makes it extremely easy, uh, this decision. Uh, to you know, wherever his leadership is, because I know one thing about him, he's very passionate, he's very driven, uh, and and he's he's man a great heart with great energy, and he's he's how he can help, how can he add value, how can he build, you know, all those things, man, that uh, that makes up who he is. That I knew about him way before he became an athletic director, an opportunity to you know, stand alongside him, to stand in the paint with him and uh, try to accomplish some things together. So, uh, you know, th that's very easy because, you know, it's a person that I know, a person that I have tremendous respect and admiration for and a person I got a lot of love for. So, uh, that, you know, that's, that, that's easy. That's, that's like a no-brainer for me. So, Coach, I'm Kyle Nice again with the three-point conversion. Oh, you know, we talked a bit about your road here. Um, now that you are here, I know that you've been in about the past week and a half or so in the woodshed there getting ready with the other coaches for spring practice. What is it you're going to be most excited for when you set foot for the first time for spring practice? Well, you know, most thing I'm going to be more excited about, uh, um, you know, for me, uh, coaching is a ministry. Man, to be able to pour into a young men, to be able to say, how, how can I serve these young men in a way to help them accomplish things athletically, uh, spiritually, physically, mentally? How can I make them better? And how can I be transparent? How can I be, uh, uh, how can I be intentional to pour into their lives in such a way that it goes far beyond uh, football? And uh, the experience I've had that we've been, you know, having an opportunity to meet with the guys and have an opportunity to get to know them. I'm just excited to uh, just to come alongside them, uh, to help them. They are all here because they want to be here. They're all here because they have uh, goals and a dream through football uh, that they, things that they want to accomplish. And as I, you know, got a chance to sit down with them and talk to them, you know, first thing I asked all of them, what is your goals? What, what do you want back? Uh, from this game, this game of football. And uh, for each one of them, once they shared their goals with me, their goals for them became my goals for them. So I am excited and I'm extremely, uh, uh, extremely excited to, you know, just get out on the field and be able to help them. And however I can, however I can uh, help point to them in a way to help them accomplish and achieve some of the things that they're looking to accomplish. 
Yeah, Coach, uh, obviously you just talked about your ties with Terry Mahajer as a player. We haven't heard a whole lot about those days about him. I, I read he was like a starting safety. Yeah. Is that what you remember? Did you play defensive line? So you were on the defense together. Can you tell us a little bit more, I guess, about how Terry Mahajer was as a football player? Listen, I don't know if you've uh, – it, it's, it's easy to be able to tell. If you look at any interview, you look at him, you see a, a very fiery, a very – feisty you you see uh you see energy you see passion that's who he was as a player uh he, he's just living his his athletic career out in a different uh platform and he's very very he was very passionate he was fiery he was tough and uh man so and he was just a great teammate you know uh so uh what you see just be able to picture it and put it in a uniform and so help it and show the pads and uh, and imagine it that way. I'm gonna have to call him and let him know, man. I spent more time uh, answering questions about now, Jesse. <laughs> hey, hey, Kenny, it's Matt Rochelle again from the Orlando Sentinel. Um, I wanted to ask, what what has your been your your what do you thought of a guy like Travis Williams who's, who's, who's running the defense? What what have your impressions of him? And, and, and did you know him before you, you came here at UCF? Yeah, yes, I did. Uh, he, him and I, we got a chance to work together at, uh, at Auburn. Um, one of the most genuine people you'll ever meet. Um, him and I, you know, football it, it is deep-rooted between him and I, but – uh, it, it's personal between him and I. I mean, he's a personal friend of mine. I mean, we talk uh, beyond uh, we, we talk beyond football. We talk about life. Uh, my wife and my, my my daughters and his daughters. I mean, they they have a relationship and, uh, and they have uh, where they talk. And so you know, he he is a genuine person. He's a like minded person to myself. Uh, you know, one of the things that we share in common, we share our faith in common. Where his faith is huge, his faith is important to him, and the same with me. Uh, so we've had many conversations about many different things, and uh, and we can we stand for the same things in life. Uh, you know, I, I, I you know it, it, I'm at a place in my career, uh, you know, where I started out early. It was about where I coached. Uh, man, I'm at a place in my career now. It's about who I co who I work for and who I work with. And uh, it, it, don't, it doesn't get any better than Travis Williams. Don't get any better than Gus Myers. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me there. Uh, Coach, Trace Strelko, Sons of UCF again. You talked about getting to know your players over a very short period of time here before spring camp begins. In those conversations, what have players shared with you about the challenge of a coaching change and perhaps a, a change in direction on the defense? What are their apprehensions? What are they sharing with you? Believe it or not, you know, um, you know, the conversations I've had, man, hadn't been so much of focusing on what's the challenges. It's just been, okay, how do we go from here? How do we go to where you're trying to go? And one thing I, you know, I'm fortunate about, and we'll see it play out uh, on the field. But you know, they just wanted to know, man, you know, how can we be better, and how can we grow from this? And you know, it hadn't been any bashing, it hadn't been any negativity. It, you know, it's, it's really, and, and the thing about it is, I, I truly believe this. At the center of success at this game is relationships. So we really had, and I wanted to know who they were. I wanted to know what their story were, what, what their background is, what their goals is. I wanted to know life with them. And, 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 and I'm, I'm like, let's establish doing life together and we'll get athletics. And uh, as we, we did that, man, I, I mean, it's been a lot about who they are. And so we really hadn't been able to really, okay, uh, this is, you know, these are, man, this is what's been wrong or this is what has gone wrong. You know, we can't change the past. All we can do is set a foundation for the future. And we, and, and, and from the day, from day one, I, I wanted to establish a foundation that a, a future of success will be supported 